Welcome to Wildspire. You get to be a fly on the wall for my intimate conversations with entrepreneurs who are changing the world. I'm your host, Stephanie Benedetto, coach, storyteller, and unmarketer at The Awakened Business, helping coaches and change-making entrepreneurs unleash their inspired message and share it with playful unmarketing. I'll ask curious questions and explore uncharted waters with my guests today. Anything can happen when we step into the unknown of infinite creativity, and that's where we're going to play. My guest today is Mitch Hash. I love this conversation because it's real and it feels kind. We talk about showing up with your body, but not just showing up with your body showing up with yourself and your life in a way that is accepting and allowing and opening. I'm excited to share with you this beautiful conversation. Let me tell you a little bit more about Mitch Hash. Mitch's mission is to be a source of healing in the world, to be present for those who are ready to initiate the deeper work of coming back to oneself. He works with individuals who have extreme body stiffness and chronic pain through stretching, relaxation, and exercise. Mitch does this work solely because of the profound impact it has had on his life experientially. He has overcome high anxiety, depression, and a hip impingement, a frozen hip, all with the work that he now teaches. Mitch is humbled and grateful to do this and to keep learning in this realm. It's my pleasure to introduce you to Mitch Hash. Hi, Mitch. Welcome to the Wildspire podcast. I'm so happy to have you as my guest today. Thanks for having me, Steph. Stoked <laughs> to be here. So this this is a first, and i I want to share I want to share the story of how I reached out to you. <laughs> this is the first time I've done this. So I was. I think YouTube just served me up one of your videos because I had been looking for things for hip stretches. I've had some trouble with my hip flexor and psoas, and I've been learning a lot. And I came across one of your videos and I watched it. It was helpful. And then for some reason, I watched another one. And then I think I watched a third. And there was something in what you're up to, something in hearing about what you're doing i i i heard you talk about a story of um opening your hips that happened at it sounds like some kind of a retreat or some kind of event like that and it was clear to me that this wasn't just about listening to your body it was it was about listening to your body but it was about listening what you're up to is listening to wisdom listening to yourself being with what is and i was really moved by it surprisingly moved for an exercise video right and without really thinking about it i i looked for your website and i'm like i just want i want to see if mitch will come on my podcast so that was that was the story and you fortunately enough were open at least to entertain the possibility and then say yes. So actually, I'm curious, Mitch, what what went, went through your head when you, <laughs> you saw my <laughs> request? Mm, yeah, I've, I've had people reach out before, um, you know, minimally, like I have a, I have a small audience, but um, I think I just was like, oh, that's cool. And then I looked at your stuff as well um actually was riding my bike that morning so I just put on a couple of your podcasts and um yeah I really enjoyed your energy and what you were bringing to the world so um for me it was just fun I was like I was like that's cool like I I like these types of things you know um just people who are spontaneous and following following something so for me it was fun yeah so you're your YouTube channel, as I recall it, is called The Art of Opening. Is that right? Yeah. What does that mean to you? <laughs> it, 
it means so much. Like <laughs> when I stumbled across that name, I was like, Oh, you know, like that's, that's it. Because, um, you know, for me, my journey kind of on the surface level started with, um, flexibility, you know, it was like, I was really, really stiff. And I think most guys don't really think about that <laughs> you know, when they are, it's like, whatever, you know, but I hit a point where I was like getting into like gymnastics training and like dance and circus style stuff. And I couldn't do any of it because <laughs> I was so stiff and that sucked. So, um, I went on this journey of like opening my body and opening my, my hips and stuff. But then intertwined with that, what I didn't even realize was like how much was bound up with that. Right. It's like all this, um, this closeness in my personality and in, uh, in mm. my, like my spirit, right. Just like in my emotions, like it wasn't just my body that was closed is what I had to like discover right it was it was basically everything <laughs> so um that the channel and like the art of opening it's like it's focused on the body um but as you saw it's like it's a lot more and i talk about a lot more and um that's why i think it's like a passion project for me yeah, mm. it really hits home for me yeah i really did feel that and it wasn't even strongly in the words that you were saying. It's coming through what you're doing. And I love that. I love seeing that. It's funny because I have so many people in my community, in my life, who come as guests on this podcast occasionally, who have a background in movement. And many of my clients have been body workers. And that always puzzled me because I didn't, I don't have a background in that, but it makes sense. It just makes sense somehow because even though it looks like the context of what I'm doing is about business, it's really about wellness. It's really about wholeness. It's really about being ourselves. And when something with the body, when body work is done with that kind of reverence and depth, I think that's also what it's doing. It, I feel the synergy in that. Right. Yeah. The, I mean, we're, we're in these bodies, you know, and like, whether you're a, a movement person or not, it's like, um, uh, yeah, we're having this somatic experience, you know, all the time. And I think that's why it can resonate a lot with, with anyone, um, anyone who's ready, right. For a little bit of deeper work in their lives. That, yeah. that makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. So is it okay with you, Mitch, if, if I bring something from my life and we kind of look at it like something from my life um, physically and we kind of compare notes on it a little bit and, and see, that. okay. <laughs> so, oh man, when you talk about the hips, like this area of the body, I often hear about it from the women's perspective, but you're addressing it from the men's perspective of mm -hmm. how much tension, how much stiffness, happens in this area and i've heard it said almost offhandedly about women like oh women carry their stress in their hips mm -hmm. and i don't know if that's true but i think it was a a few months ago even before that i've been on a journey with my body for years and probably really started listening to my body maybe eight or nine years ago when i started doing some body work with someone who was very gifted and I didn't realize that I could talk to my body, that my body would tell me things that like my left leg would go, yeah, I don't know how the right leg is doing what it's doing, but it sounds funny to personify it, but that's what it feels like. And there's this communication that can happen. And when I'm open to it, it teaches me things. 
and I can work with my body and things can change. And so a couple of months ago, I started as I've been on a dance journey, like, oh, I want to work on the splits. I have, I'm, I'm not a particularly flexible person. I'm very strong genetically. I came on board that way, but flexibility wasn't my biggest strength. And it's like, okay, I'm going to start working on this. And it was hard and it hurt to do it properly. And I would start crying, but it wasn't because of the pain. There was a kind of, I don't know, it felt like there was a release in that. So I'm kind of curious if you've seen that or what you see about this art of opening when we start being with our bodies a little bit differently. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I've had very similar experiences. Um, I think, you know, like in our modern lives, we don't value this so we we don't feel right uh, in a lot of ways but we'll keep it to the body it's like um we're not used to going in and feeling mm -hmm. right and um so it's like you could think about it as like most of most of what's going on within us it's, it's like it's dead <laughs> right or it's just like a it's a sleep to sleep but it's there and it's and it's affecting us too right and i think when you have an experience like that what you're doing is you're you're going in and you're you're choosing to feel especially these places that um that are bound up in in some way you know they're stressed in some way or they're holding something and and then you go in and, and you just you're just like hey i'm gonna feel this right i'm going to choose to be with this mm -hmm. and then that thing that you're working with it's like it has an opportunity to be felt and to be seen and then um i think what can come from that is it's like it's kind of like oh thank you <laughs> right and then it gets to express that thing that it wants to express which sometimes is emotion right um and you can have these, you can have these releases, you can have big, really big releases. Sometimes you can have really small releases. Sometimes it's like you, you even have like visions or smells come up and it's like something from childhood, you know, it's like something that's been trapped in your body for a really long time. And that's, it's not, it might sound a little esoteric, but, um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, 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 it's been my experience and working with people, I, I get all of the same reports, you know, so it's, um, it's something that's like experientially understood for me. And that's same for you, right? It sounds like that's, that's what, what happened with you. <laughs> yeah. And, and it wasn't always that intense, like, actually, I've had to take a break from from working with splits for a while because of this injury I've had, which wasn't directly related to that, but it was kind of related. But even that, a friend of mine, um, I'm going to get really spiritual now. I hope that's okay. Disclaimer, it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> You're in, though. No. A friend of mine was said, I was talking about this injury and I'm I'm really learning to be with things, as you're saying, like to feel them, to listen to them, to notice. I can't push through things. I mean, I can. That's what I did for a lot of my life. But to be with it, to listen and allow things to open and move, because I think I got this from somewhere in your video. I don't know a video you have somewhere, but the message that I received was, you know, it doesn't want to move if you push it it's closing down, it's contracting, yeah. but it does want to move, but you have to be with it in the way that works for it in a gentler way. And I don't think we're accustomed to being like that with ourselves. And so that's kind of how I've been trying to be with it. But I have my moments of frustration, like, damn, I want to dance. Come <laughs> on, just heal already. Would you? And, but it's yeah, not my yeah. body. My body's doing everything that it knows to do. And I'm the one who's got to 
guide and, you know, nurture this thing. My friend said, can I offer you a thought about this leg, your injury? And I said, yeah, please. And he said, well, if everything is God, if everything is the one, if everything is spirit, then what's happening in your leg has to be that too. And there was something about hearing that and meeting it that way. Like, oh yeah, this is, this is my body's process. This is life living me. And when something gets pulled or torn or injured, it gets inflamed. And my body lets me know about it through sensations, some of them painful. And I can be with it. And it's okay. And through that, I can heal, right? Like this is, this is about the body, but it's about so much more. As you said, it's a metaphor. So yeah, what, what do you hear in that that's interesting to you? I think not, all, I, th I think not all the time, but I think sometimes, maybe all the time, I don't know, but sometimes we're like presented things in our body or in our lives. And like you said, it's like, um, like I've heard this called earth school, right? Like we're here to learn. And uh, yeah, sometimes we're presented things that are just like really hard. And it's sort of our, our like job or our responsibility to like, I guess you could say figure that out or like to, to go on that journey, you know? And I think that's, that's like sometimes where like our medical system doesn't serve us is it's, it's all like, let's, let's fix it. Let's fix it. You know, like we've all heard this a thousand times, right? Take this pill or whatever. Right. But you know, like once you go on the journey of like taking the self responsibility, um, it actually really opens up a lot because you realize how much healing you can do on your own. And um, yeah, not to bash the medical system, like they save lives, you know, thank you. But, um, but there's also this, like, we can save our own life too. And I think, uh, I think more than we even know, you know, way more than we even know. Um, yeah. The things that I've seen, and heard at this point in my life, I'm like, yeah, like we have so much power, <laughs> you know? So, so like taking, taking these, uh, and no matter how hard it is, like taking these things as an opportunity and almost as like a challenge, it's like, okay, I'm gonna, you know, see what I can do, figure this out. Yeah. Yeah. And it's scary too. <laughs> yeah. Will you will you tell me a little bit, Mitch, about your journey in the art of opening for you personally? Like, what what are you learning? What have you seen in this that now I know you're turning around and sharing it with other people? Um, yeah, I I don't think I realized it at the time. But when I started trying to open my body, it was uh, it became very much like a spiritual process. Um, and so it's like it's been interesting because the two, like the physical and the, the spiritual, have just been like side by side, you know. Um, and with with the spiritual side, it's it's been. Um, I'd say it's a lot more important. Like there's been, there's been the two, but the, the spiritual side has been, been most of it. And it's been a lot of letting go. Um, a lot of like really hard things to be honest. Cause like when you're letting go, like you're letting go of things you really like, right? <laughs> things that make you feel comfortable you know, um, like relationships and, um, 
you know, parts of your identity and your ego that, um, that make you feel comfortable, right? They make you feel like, oh, I know these things and these, and these things are safe for me, but they're also keeping you stuck <laughs> is what I discovered. So, um, yeah, like going in and like evaluating those parts of your ego and, and letting, letting things go and shedding things that, um, that just have to go. And for me, that was, um, as I got further and further into that, I realized, okay, um, this process of letting go is actually probably the most important thing I'm doing. And I started working on more of like relaxation work, um, letting go of my body. And um, again, it's all the same thing. <laughs> like letting go in your body, letting go in your in your mind, right? In your nervous system. And um, yeah, like the that's actually led me to to working with this uh Qigong Taoist system where that's what they teach. It's everything they teach is how to let go. Um and yeah, it's it's been you know, the, the art of opening, it's like, uh, it's been a hard process, but honestly, the most worthwhile thing I've ever done. I, I feel the most uh, comfortable, the most at home, the most free, you know, in my body and in my mind. And like, life's still hard, <laughs> but there's like, there's just this sense of ease that just keeps coming and keeps coming, right? Um, so that's like a little bit of my journey. We could go deeper if you want. <laughs> well, it's really up to you. You know, I'm, I'm curious about what you want to share. I know you've been sharing, at least I've seen a little bit in your videos, but I don't even think sometimes it's as important the story as it is what you've seen in your story, as it is what you know now. Like, that's what I was picking up on in just watching a few minutes of you. It was like, he's seen something. He knows something. <laughs> what I've what seen was some things. <laughs> And there was something that you were speaking to me about how sometimes these areas of tension are caused by a weakness somewhere else, which makes perfect sense. And like, again, like I feel it as a metaphor, so much of what, what I do with people has to do with how we use our minds. And this isn't just a mental thing. I'm talking about the mind as the experiencer of the, let's see, how do I want to say this? I don't see thought and emotion as separate because they go together. It's an energy right? And so mostly, you know, we, we live in this every day, just like we live in our bodies every day, but we don't really understand how they work. We don't really understand how our mind works to create our experience. And so we have all these misunderstandings about mm -hmm. what's making me feel the way that I feel. And it looks like it's because this bad thing happened or the numbers in my bank account are too low, and therefore I feel bad. But there's this missing link in between there, which is what's happening inside of me, which is how we experience everything. And so what, I, what I've heard that mirrors what I know in this realm, in what you were speaking to, is learning about how my body works and how it communicates with me. But the principle of being with and relaxing and letting go yeah is so powerful in everything we do as humans yeah yeah so there's um there's this book i read it's called the the tibetan book of living and dying uh it's not the tibetan book of the dead but it's it kind of talks about their tradition the tibetan buddhism and uh, he he talks a lot about clinging. 
um, and the clean, like the clean clinging of the mind. So it's like, we get really like caught on to things. So it's like, like, I love this mug, you know, like this is my favorite coffee mug. And, uh, and I love it so much. Like I drink out of it every morning, you know, but like if that coffee mug were to, to drop and break, if I'm clinging to it and it, because I love it so much, I'm gonna be so sad, <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm gonna be so sad. I'm just gonna be broken down for like weeks because I love this mug so much. And that's a funny example. It was like an easy example, right? Um, But that shows it's like, because I love the mug so much and I have so much attachment to it that once it goes, like, or I don't want to let it go, right? And then once it does go, I'm just, it just kills me, you know? Mm. And uh, that's clinging. Like, we do that all the time with with so many things, right? Like, with people, we do it with, uh, possessions with ideas, like our jobs and like, um, even, even our ideas of like spiritual beliefs, like we're clinging to, to everything. Right. It's, um, and you know, in that, in that book, obviously he, he talks about like that clinging is what keeps you suffering. And, um, what's interesting is I found he, I'm sure he talks about it in that book, but like, all these traditions they talk about this it's like that clinging that's happening here it's like oh i love these things i need it i need it i need it that clinging is coming into your body it's like a clinging of your nervous system your nervous system is like doing this and then so that that clinging of your mind is then coming into here and so you're doing all this clinging all the time and then you're wondering like Oh, why do I have all this? Why does my shoulders hurt? Right? Uh, like, I don't know why my shoulders are so tense. It's like, well, you're you're clinging so much, right? And that's uh that honestly is the biggest, the biggest lesson I've learned probably in my life. <laughs> that that the nervous system is clinging because of what is happening up here or what's happened in the past, it's something we're holding on to. And then the letting go is the letting go of, of the nerves, but it's all one thing, right? So if you learn to let go up here, it's going to help you let go in here. But also if you learn to let go in here, it's going to help you let go in here. So when you work with systems that work with this letting go, whether whatever it is, it could be no system. It could just be you practicing that. Um you're really like starting to heal the body on a really deep level and heal yourself on a really deep level. Um, and that, that there's, and what surprised me is like the levels to it as well. Um, you know, I've got a lot of release in my body at this point, but just realizing like, Oh, there's so much more to go. <laughs> and I'm sure like, that's, that's it. You know, it's just, you just keep, keep going and that's the spiritual like evolution and path <clears throat> that, yeah that's what it, that brings up for me <laughs> mm. that's really beautiful i love that you found this did you have interest in a spiritual path before you started this journey for yourself i'm sure i did um yeah yeah I, at one point in college, I remember just being like, I don't care about any of this. <laughs> like, I remember like, um, being interested in like meditation, but I didn't even know what it was, you know, really like, I, and I do remember like, right when I got out of college, the first book I read, uh, was the, the power of now, um, Eckhart Tolle. And that, that was really helpful and started off a lot for me. Um, but I didn't start. Yeah. I, I started a lot of it at, at a similar time. Mm -hmm. Wow. Cause it's so, it's so clear to me what I, what I hear in it 
that I've been seeing is I just noticed recently how much I'm still trying to control things, which is like that tension in my mind about I need things to be a certain way, which is clinging, right? It's no different than what I might do in my body when I'm, I don't even do it consciously probably, but I'm clenching or I'm trying to be a certain way. And I didn't know I was doing it because I'd seen it before and I'd let go before. And here I am going, wow, I'm on a bus, I'm on a train, right? I take trains regularly and I notice myself trying to manage my, my emotions by, with worry. I, what's the next stop? What, what is the next stop? Do I have to get off at this stop? You know, like, and it's a way of controlling, trying to control in order to feel safe. In, and seeing that, I notice I don't need to do that. I really don't. I know the stops. I can look out the window and see where we are. I can ask someone for help if I need it. There's an app on my phone that can tell me which stop to get off. Like, I have all these resources. Do I need to be tense? Do I need to worry? Mm -hmm. But I didn't know I was doing it until I saw it. And I, I realized today I was on the train earlier, and I'm like, I didn't do that today, like, at all. Like, I noticed that I did it less, and suddenly I'm not doing it. And this I see in us all the time um, in what I do as a coach. Years ago, I started seeing that the more I relax, the less I do, and I let someone's words and their presence just move through me, the easier it is. And strangely enough, the more impactful it is for me to be with someone than when I'm trying to listen and I'm like I used to I used to take notes a lot and like I'm listening I'm really listening but it was tense and when I relax there's space there's an openness and there's always more for me to let go of it seems like there's always something more it doesn't stop and that's not to say that it isn't perfect as it is now it's this unending journey of how much more ease can I experience? How much more space can I feel? Yeah. I, I love what you just said so much. Like, and I relate a lot to it because the, like you just use the word space, right? As it's like, think about you doing that all the time. Think about how much energy that takes. <laughs> so like, constantly like uh just trying to trying to control right constantly like thinking about all the things that you need to do to make sure that this is okay <laughs> but the truth is that it's okay right now you know it's it's always okay unless it's not <laughs> unless it's like a real like crazy dangerous situation it's not okay but like 99% of our lives, it's okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so it takes it takes a lot of energy to do that. I realized that too. And when I came out of that, I was like, wait, I have so much space now and like so much energy, you know, I have way more energy now. I used to be like, that's part of the reason I got into this. I was, I had to, I was like, like low level depression, you know, it wasn't like crazy, but low level depression, I had anxiety my whole life, you know, crippling anxiety. And yeah, it's like now I don't have any of that. You know, like just a tad will creep into my days, you know, and the amount of spaciousness that exists now is so amazing, you know. Um, and yeah, it, sound, it sounds like you've, you've felt that spaciousness. Um, and it's, it's, it's a world different, isn't it? Like, 
it's like being a different person. It is. It really <laughs> is. And I didn't know why I was doing it. Like I was creating that. And that is not a judgment. That is just what mm -hmm. we do by thinking and thinking and thinking. And every thought that we have that's tense has, we feel it as tense, both as emotions and sensations. The emotions are the labels that we put on it. The sensations in our bodies are how we feel mm -hmm. it how we know if it serves us or not. And man, I was wrong. But I was doing it to try to stay safe. It made perfect yeah. sense. And it wasn't until I realized, like, what you said, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. So when I think about letting go of something, it feels like I'm losing something. But what I think actually happens when we let go is we just really get present and what isn't there falls away and we're no longer clinging to it. It's not there. So it's actually not even something that I need to do. It just happens. And from people, perhaps like yourself, sometimes like me, and I'm just with my body when I'm with my breath, I get, quieter I get more still and here I am it happens in meditation for some people it happens in nature for other people and what isn't falls away and letting go is because it can seem like a really hard thing and again if I think about it that way it is scary yeah but it's just being yeah yeah I mean you nailed it <laughs> it's uh i mean i've had some peace like don't get me wrong like i think it's some of the hardest stuff you'll ever do in your life mm. is like to really let go um i think that's why we don't do people don't do it and the things that i've had to let go of like were some of them were frightening you know, really frightening. Um, like leaving a relationship and like um, parts of my identity, I'm still letting go of. <laughs> but, you know, uh, so yeah, it's 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 a hard path. It's a really hard path. Um, so I don't want to make it seem like just do this. It's <laughs> but. I mean, as we have both said, you know, multiple times throughout this conversation, it's it's also like uh, very fruitful, you know. Um, it'll change your life, but it'll like it'll make your life more colorful, more beautiful, like more open, and um, yeah, you know, that's that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> I think ultimately I had I had an experience pretty recently of seeing the the false belief that I built my whole world around mm -hmm. and it was all meant to protect me it was all meant to keep me safe it was meant to help me get love and safety and security and all the things that everyone wants and i made up this identity of myself and the way the world is and i couldn't see it like i created it and then i lived in that world and it was invisible to me and yet somehow what's so amazing in this this ability we have as humans is even though we can create a reality, we create the world every day with what we think and how we think it is. We, we cannot perceive the world objectively because everything happens inside of us. And the beliefs and the things we call values and our identity and all our experiences, our memories, like we build this scaffolding of a world but it's a house of cards and so you can imagine i mean i felt it 
I think I'm more comfortable with it than a lot of people because I it doesn't I know that this changes too but pulling out that card that everything was balanced on it's like oh my god I was so wrong who am I what is the world now I think this is why people have existential crises when something that they've made their world about a partner a career of their body whatever it is it disappears it's gone and it's like their whole world falls apart because nothing makes sense and that is incredibly painful if we think we're actually losing something and and i would say if because are we you know and i'm i'm gently saying this as you pointed out mitch and i'm glad you said it I, i'm not saying this is easy and that that, oh, just do it, and everybody should, and like, <laughs> come on, like, just let go, everyone. That, that's not how I mean it. Because the truth is, we don't have to. We also get to hang on, and there's something cool about the attachments I feel for people. Yeah. I wouldn't want to get rid of that feeling of, there's a feeling of connection, and sometimes there's a fondness, there's an attachment, there's a personal relationship I have. You know, that too is... Is a beautiful thing. And yeah, it causes me pain when I cling to it. I suffer. And sometimes I do. And then I don't. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, suffering is just a part of being here, you know. <laughs> and I love that. I'm actually, I relate to that a lot. There's things in my life now where I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I really enjoy this, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah. Really, I just, I really like this and it, yeah, it's important to me, you know, even if I can also see at the same time, like it's an attachment, you know, yeah, I, I love these things. And, um, yeah, just to touch on one thing you said, um, uh, yeah, it, I think the interesting thing, cause I've had, I've had the house of cards fall a couple times, um, and, you know, one of the times that I had, um, so I've, I've worked with like plant medicines and psychedelics and, um, that's been a part of my journey, but I, I don't I try not to make it about that. Um, and, you know, one of my experiences I had, it's just like stripped everything away, you know, like, um, you know, they talk about ego death and like. It was that, but on like a really, yeah, it was a really big level. It just like, it showed me everything and just been like pulling all of it away. It's like everything, everything I love, you know, like gone, gone, gone. And uh, I was like so scared, you know, I was so afraid. And then like, it was, once it was all gone, I was like so afraid to let go. And then like, but then once it was all gone, I was like, oh, I'm still here. <laughs> Uh, oh okay you know i was like looking around like wow okay that can all go and i can still be here you know and like um you know that was just one experience but then i've I've like felt that in life in other ways like again like that relationship like man that was that was like the most humbling thing ever like letting that go and like just getting to rock bottom one one version of rock bottom and being like oh i'm still here and also like i feel so much grief but like i'm okay <laughs> you know and um i think that's one of the most healing things the okay thing like it's okay um i see it all the time with people like because i yeah do this this work and and like being in those spaces with people when they finally are just like, oh, it's okay. And then like you see, like they're just like, everything will just like drop. Oh. If you if you're yeah, I don't know if you have any video, but what I did is I just like like my whole body just relaxed, right? Um, so yeah, that's that's a huge piece, you know. If you've never felt that, like. I don't know how to make you feel it, but um, just know that it, it exists. <laughs>
just know it exists and it's it's possible, you know. This is such a powerful thing for us to know that we can be in our mess of a human experience with everything feeling like it goes to shit and literal things in our lives passing away and losing things and people and tragedies happening. And in the midst of it, oh, I'm okay, I'm here. There is something that's left. That's what I wanted to ask you. Like with all this letting go, it, so it does sound terrifying. And even letting go of my own identity and who I think I am and the things that I love. Like, why would I want to let go of those things, right? And, but there's an experience for you of something that's left. I'm here. I'm okay. Do you have a, more of a sense of what that is? Like, what's left when everything falls away that we cling to? What do you think? <laughs> I do have an answer for that, but I was asking <laughs> you. But do you want to share first? I think we both should. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I'll go first. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I have a hunch it's what they talk about in all these ancient, <laughs> ancient traditions, but I, don't, I think it's your heart, your soul, you know, like that a piece of you that you know very uh, deeply, you know, you know it exists and you can't name it, but it's there, you know. What about you? No, oh, you said that so beautifully, Mitch. What's left when everything... What's left is what I really am, not what I think I am. The stuff of the universe, the everything that makes up everything, the nothing that makes up everything. And it doesn't, it's, it infuses my, my human self and my personality, but it isn't that, and it's not restricted by that, and it isn't limited by that, and it doesn't die. Yeah. And so that that's left. And I don't know what that is either. I'm, I'm using words for it, but it has a feeling. And that feeling is, oh, it's okay. I'm here. This is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's real, right? It's real. Yeah, I think even if like, because... Because it sounds like me and you are connecting on like a a level of understanding, right? Like we like we've felt these things, and I think you know. Okay, so I talked to my younger self who, who didn't know these things. Maybe maybe someone who's listening. Um, you know, maybe someone's like an atheist or uh, just doesn't doesn't get down with any of this talk right i think the way that you could relate to that is like you know think about times when you've like broken down you've like cried you know and like that feeling of like um yeah i, I want to say like despair like hopelessness but then but then that feeling like it, it shifts you know if you really like break down you know and that, that feeling like will shift to like this feeling of like, ah, you know, like, okay, I'm here. <laughs> Eventually you stop crying, right? And you're just like, okay, I'm here. I feel better. <laughs> I feel better now. Um, it's like that, that feeling, right? That's kind of what we're getting at here. And I think, I think everyone's cried. <laughs> I could be wrong. I've talked to some guys who said they haven't. <laughs> but yeah, I think a lot of people could relate to that. <clears throat> oh, that's beautiful, Mitch. Thank you so much for showing up with your own journey and then sharing it 
what you're seeing because it made a difference to me and I know it's making a difference to other people. And I think there's, there's nothing more beautiful than that when your own journey of transformation and freedom and letting go can then ripple out and inspire other people in the same. And I, I hear and feel it in what you're putting out there. So thank you so much for that. And for people who would like to follow your journey or learn about what you're up to, where's the best place for them to go to learn more? Yeah, um, check out my YouTube channel, uh, Art of Opening. And it's still a little, the channel's still a little small. So the best way to find me is if you type in Art of Opening and then just type in like stretching after that, and then my channel will pop up. Um, my website is artofopening.org. Uh, that's where really just if you, if you were inspired and you want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, um, head over there and we can, we can have a chat. Awesome. And I will share all the links and things so that people will be able to click in description or below this video to find out more. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mitch. This has been a great pleasure. Yeah, I want to say thank you as well. Um, you are uh, you're doing some really good things in the world. Uh, thanks for sharing your yourself as well. It's it's really great to be a part of it and to to watch it. <laughs>Thanks so much for joining me for today's Wildspire conversation. If you'd like to receive a weekly Wildspire email from me filled with inspiring stories, unmarketing experiments, tips for playing your way to impact and income without the hustle and hype, insights from my spiritual business journey, and more, go to theawakenedbusiness.com forward slash Wildspire. Until next time, may you know yourself as the gorgeous wild creation you are.